We've come to the iconic Box Hill to carry on an experiment to find out what's faster uphill, an aero road bike or a standard road bike. As the name suggests, aero road bikes are built for speed, but the downside of this is that they're often a bit heavier than a standard road bike and also a little bit less comfortable with a more aggressive geometry. We previously carried out an experiment at Herne Hill Velodrome, which showed that an aero bike is significantly faster than a standard road bike on a flat circuit. However, that result was to be expected. If you have a rider riding two bikes set up to the same position, and one's an aero road bike and the other's a standard road bike, the aero road bike will be faster on flat terrain. In reality, any ride you're on, if it's a Sunday ride or even a road race, there'll be some climbing. Aerodynamics are still important when you're going uphill, but we want to get an idea of how much gravity comes into effect when you consider that the aero bike is heavier than the road bike. So that brings us to the next question. Why Box Hill? Two reasons. Firstly, it has a steady gradient of around 5%. This will enable Ollie, when riding up the hill, to maintain a set wattage. Secondly, it's around two and a half kilometers long. This is the kind of climb that most riders in the UK will be able to ride. So, how are we going to test this? Well, I'm going to ride at Box Hill a total of four times, twice on each bike. I'm going to ride at 200 watts and at 300 watts. The reason for this is because we think that 200 watts is representative of a club rider or someone who likes sportives and is maybe just getting into the sport. And 300 watts is more representative of a more experienced cyclist, maybe a road racer. For the lightweight bike, we've chosen a Focus Izalco Max. This is the same frame as ridden by the AG2R Le Mondial professional team and features classic round tube profiles, Jura Ace Di2 and Mavic Sirium Arsis wheels. The complete bike weight is a svelte 6.4 kilos. For the aero bike, we are using the rapid looking Cervelo S5 as used by British Cycling, MTM Quebec and One Pro Cycling. Often regarded as being the most aero road bike there is, it features Jura Ace Di2 and head jet wheels. Weighing in at 7.2 kilograms, the Cervelo is almost a kilogram heavier than the Focus. To ensure the test is consistent and as reliable as possible, we set up both bikes at the same position. Ollie will ride up the hill in a seated position with his hands on the hoods and each test ride will start with a rolling start. Right, so starting with the 200 watts, on the Cervelo it took you 9 minutes 24, it was 9.6 miles an hour or 15 kilometres. And on the Focus at 200 watts it was 9 minutes and 6 seconds at 9.9 .9 miles per hour or 16 kilometres an hour. So quite a bit quicker on the lightweight bike over the aero bike. Yeah, a kilometre an hour. So what about 300 watts? Well, at 300 watts on the Cervelo, it was 6 minutes 50, which gave you 13.2 miles per hour or 21.2 kilometres an hour. And on the Focus, it took 6 minutes 43, which gave you 13.4 miles per hour or 21.6 kilometres per hour. So Ollie, what do you think all this shows us? Well, I think it shows that a lightweight bike is quicker at going uphill, but aerodynamics only really come into play above 10 miles an hour. So when you're traveling slower at 200 watts, you're, we were going just below 10 miles an hour. Yeah. And so the gap between the two bikes was, was bigger. But when we were traveling at 300 watts and we were traveling faster, aerodynamics started to help the Cervelo a bit more. And so the gap was only seven seconds between the two bikes. So, so in short, it's fair to say if you're riding very steep hills or you're not reaching that 10 miles an hour, a standard road bike may be the better investment for you. Yeah, it's going to give you more benefit on the hills. But if you're a stronger rider and you're traveling faster up hills, then the gap is going to be less. And only seven seconds on this hill, you'd easily make that up on the descent and on the flat on an aero road bike, as we've shown that it is dramatically faster. So an aero road bike is probably a good all round option, especially seeing as it's not much heavier and they are getting comfier now. For the purposes of this test, we used a full aero road setup and a normal road bike with shallow rims. We'd expect, had we put deep section rims on the normal standard road bike, that it had probably finished in between. But also, we'd like to try this test in the future, a longer climb as well, and how much more exaggerated the difference between the two bikes would be. 